And we are live. My name is Martin Oxy, and welcome to this latest episode of Totally Unscripted. Uh, hello, Charles. How are you doing? Hey, Martin. How are you doing? Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, missing today is Steve. Uh, he had a little uh, overlapping commitment, so uh, it's just going to be the two of us to get started here, um, which I'm really excited about the show. I have... I've loved this partner, uh, Colsada, from uh, for many years, and I've always uh, really appreciated their innovative work around workspace. And so it would be super great to hear actually what they do to build solutions on workspace. Mm -hmm. So I can't get waited to get started on that. How, how about you, Martin? What do you think? Well, I think it, it, in terms of our kind of um, the the topics that we covered, I think we've you know we've looked at smaller scale people supporting Google Workspace. So. I think it's going to be fascinating to hear how you do it on scale. Um, and um, without going into too many spoilers, uh, Zada are big and getting bigger. Um, so I think that's definitely something interesting to hear about. Absolutely. But before we bring them on, I was gonna, I was thinking about something. And uh, I also had the pleasure of being on the Google Workspace um, update uh, podcast the other day. And I was thinking to myself, how do people stay in tune with all the things that go on at Google? And, you know, I work at Google and I struggle to stay up with all the things that we're releasing, uh, not just obviously in the developer space, but everything around workspace overall. And so I figured I want to share a couple of assets um, to get folks started and then maybe actually talk about a couple of the new mm -hmm. things that are uh, actually happening out there in the workspace world that affects developers. So if you wouldn't mind popping my screen up, Martin, let's get started just real quickly before we bring on Sada. What's the best way to stay up to date or what are some ways to simplify it or, or some, some neat resources? So obviously, if you're trying to stay up to date, probably the easiest one is the Google Workspace Update blog. And so this blog comes out whenever there's something new, we publish something and we show you what's changed. You can see we have an article right here uh, that just came out today. And you know it's a great place to learn. It, it pulls you off to other things. But but one of the things that we noticed is that folks don't necessarily have time to check in with blogs or wait for posts to be up to date. So a few months ago, I actually produced a blog myself, ironically, that talked about a really neat way of pulling this information from blogs like this and actually make them available in things like Google Chat. So instead of you going to that blog article to find information, have that blog article come to you as soon as it's published. And so uh, you can see I've got a neat little banner here that comes in uh, on this Google Works, uh, Workspace Updates chatbot. And the neat thing is I can go off and read more information if I'm interested. I can have conversations around this uh, right inside of this space, inside of this room. So it's a neat way of keeping up to date. So I just wanted to share. Uh, it's actually really easy to do. We've got a blog out there that I uh, released back in August on this that I help co-author with Justin Wexler. Uh, it'll tell you about how we built this and actually how Justin built it more, more namely and a little bit about it. Um, but probably the most important thing is you actually can take this and install it yourself. It actually runs uh, on AppScript with an AppScript timer job, and then it uses a web hook to actually push it into any room of your choice, uh, any space inside it. So it's a great way, again, of instead of chasing information, having the information presented to you. Uh, Martin, if you have the short link on that, that'd be super awesome for folks to find this if they can't read that little screen um, and flash it up there. We'll hold that a second uh, e easy way to find that uh, up there. Uh, so check that one out. Uh, the other thing I mentioned is um, was fortunate enough to actually get uh, an invite to talk to the Google Workspace Recap folks. Um, they do a great weekly podcast that breaks down everything that's going on, not just from what they see in the blog, um, but what they see around Workspace. Um, the folks over there are uh, Jesse Nolan and Steve Larson. They actually... Uh, break it down and what i love about it from a customer standpoint and a partner standpoint they actually put a spin on the reality of it so it's not really architecture it's really them talking about how do these changes affect them and so we've just actually did an episode with uh, steve basil and myself this week all right went a little long in an hour and a half uh, <laughs> charles uh, how, why, how how could that happen how could that happen? It was, it was an excellent episode. So again, check it out. And then again, they do this weekly on everything developer and not developer, well, actually not developer, admin topics, user experience. It's, it's a great resource. And I just wanted to plug finally, I'm a big music fan. Uh, since they post on Spotify, I finally got an episode up on Spotify. So that's 
<laughs> okay, I'm gonna switch over to developer for a second though, Martin. One of the things that is a super neat way to stay in touch is this great resource called App Script Pulse, specifically bringing developer topics together. I think you've done an amazing job getting this off the ground as the community lead on it. And now it's become kind of an essential way of staying uh, up to date on specifically developer topics uh, around workspace. So another great resource. Uh, if you haven't seen that, pulse.appscript.info is a great thing. Okay, with that couple items before we bring Sada on, I just want to talk about a couple of the really key changes that affect developers that all this content probably talked about this week, um, but just kind of bring it uh, short right here. The first one is some changes to Google Workspace Marketplace. And some of these are neat for users, for admins, for folks taking these solutions down to actually discover apps better or to be more comfortable with the apps are. And some of them are little, like simply, you know, what was the last update of this listing? So they know, is this a well-maintained uh, application? Is this offering something that, that's actively being changed or worked on? Uh, also, uh, developers can now announce if it's fee, free, you know, freemium, you know, paid with free features like we see here with this this one. Uh, so a great way of knowing kind of what you're getting involved in before you get involved in it. Uh, so if you can test drive it before you actually have to buy, all those great things. Uh, other neat things that they're doing besides kind of a, you know, a fresher look are things like editor's choice. So again, we've got a criteria for putting some apps in here, but I can come through quickly and see, you know, what are some of the new newcomers that are interesting to look at? What are some of the business essentials? And it, you know, it's a great way of actually having to go through instead of having to you know just scroll through endless topics, you can see them there as well too. So some good changes there. Um, there's a blog post out on that if you wanna see more that talks about that. Again, you can use uh, the, the bot to do that or check it out straight from the, um, uh, the blog. The other one, which is kind of big and the last thing I wanna talk about here real quick are the changes to menus in Google Sheets. And so these are kind of big changes um, because if you've written solutions in the past, uh, the location of those have moved. And so your users will either need, you know, just, you know, reacquainting themselves with it or perhaps even retraining or even your documentation may need to change. And so something you want to take a check into. Um, I think they're super helpful, but there's going to be a little bit of adjustment. Some of the things they've done and actually need to let me just show you these here. I'll show you because I already have obviously a live version working internally. Let me take this and bring this menu over and put on the right. And then, oh, let me get another window from this side. Give me a second while I pull the window in. And I'd be better learning all the hotkeys. <laughs> <laughs> this is where I can't help you, Charles. I'm an old Tyler here. Okay, yeah, make it a little bit smaller. Okay, and bring it down. So really at a glance, what you'll notice is the changes are slight, but there's, they can be significant. So across the top, you can see on the left is what's new. On the right is what's old. So first of all, you'll notice you know, file, edit, view, insert, blah, blah, blah. They're all the same. What you'll notice quickly, though, is tools no longer contains anything to do with extensibility. And we have a new menu item called extensions. So whereas before we had stuff under tools, stuff under add-ons, now instead of having add-ons separate and tools having things like script editor and macros, it's all under one location, which I think is awesome. I think it helps folks actually um, narrow down on what they're trying to work with. And the theme of this kind of you know reconfiguration is to make the menus easier to discover. You've noticed they've added more icons. There's been consolidation. There's been shortening. So for example, it doesn't scroll off the screen. You can see how the edit, for example, is a lot neater. Uh, even things like the right menu, look at the right menu. The current one is quite long. The future one is shorter, a little easier, a little more concise. And so uh, a nice job overall. Again, not mm -hmm. a huge change, but then, again, if you've got users out there and they're wondering, where did my favorite apps go? Um, that you have as add-ons, they're now under the extensions. What do you think, Martin? Oh, I think it looks great. Um, so do you know what, so this is rolling out as we speak? It is rolling out as we speak. Some That's folks great. already have it. And uh, the blog tells you the details. I think it's supposed to be up by the end of the month to most folks. So it's an uh, early preview in, um, for, for early adopter domains. So that's that. So that, look forward to that. Let's bring the SADA folks on and talk to them.
So we have Kelly Wright and Kevin Jury. Welcome to the show. Hello. 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 So um, are you going to have to rewrite a lot of internal documentation around Google Sheets? Now that's my first question. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, one very recent customer might have that update. <laughs> it needs some documentation updates, but yeah. Be before we go in too much detail in, in terms of what um, you do, can you just give an overview for those that aren't familiar with SADA in terms of what, what services SADA provides? Yeah, definitely. So uh, SADA is a Google Cloud partner, and we provide professional services around uh, the almost the entirety of the Google Cloud technology stack. So um, all of the different uh, technology pillars on the GCP side from infrastructure modernization uh, to data analytics um, and the workspace and collaboration services as well. So looking at workspace, app sheet, app script, as well as other uh, collaboration services uh, that connect with workspace. And <laughs> oh, okay. I thought where so I will say uh, the the workspace side uh, has been you know we started with workspace uh, back in two thousand seven. We were one of the first uh, Google Cloud partners to come in uh, with delivering Gmail and go at the time, I believe it was probably called Google Apps for Business mm -hmm. um, all of those years ago. Um, so we've definitely seen very large iterations of not just the naming, but also the products being updated. So uh, thinking through all of the Gmail updates and how we deliver uh, workspace and train users on how to use Gmail and make it work for them. Um, so before we dive more into SADA, I love to actually have the folks meet you both. Now, Kelly, I know you've been in SADA almost since the very beginning. You're one of the one of, one of the originals, one of the original SADians, I believe, is as <laughs> the terminology you use. Um, how did you get to the position you are? Kind of what's 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 your story? Sure. So I have been at SADA for just shy of nine years. So close to one of the originals. There's actually people on our team that have been here longer than I have been. So that's always fun. Um, at SADA, I actually started on our support desk. So doing enterprise support. Uh, the fun story there is I walked into the office and they said, the person who sat in the chair that you are sitting in used to do Google support. So do you have a Google account? I was like, yes, I have a Gmail account. And they're like, cool, you're going to do Gmail support. I was like, okay, awesome. So <laughs> that's kind of how I got started on this trajectory uh, with working on Google Cloud. Uh, if, you know, prior to Google coming in, um, SADA was more of a managed services provider. And that was the 100% of what we did. Um, so, uh, worked through, uh, support, took on deployments, uh, and ran through quite a few deployments during my tenure here. Um, one of the large case studies is Colgate Palmolive. So that was one that ran through, um, and we put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into that, uh, ran some that, good that scripts there. Yeah, it's awesome. You've seen every angle of the business and you have the scars to prove it, which is mm -hmm. awesome. Right. So, yeah. so, yeah. so Kevin, I understand you, you're a solution architect, obviously come from a development perspective. Well, a little bit about your background and, and your, your journey. Yeah. Um, so I've been at SADA now for three years. Uh, it's been amazing. Uh, before that, kind of, uh, I was actually in the Google ecosystem uh, at another partner before that, kind of got my feet wet. Um, got into it, came, joined Kelly's team, uh, actually as a deployment engineer. Uh, initially, uh, I think I built one too many tools and ultimately Kelly said, uh, we need to uh, change this and uh, move to a full-time developer position. Um, so I took that on. And then uh, just recently, uh, I've been working on transitioning to a full solutions architect role focused on uh, Still development work, but getting customers listed uh, on the marketplace in GCP, and then uh, some AI offerings as well, like uh, mainly Docs AI and things like that. 
That's awesome. Hold that thought. We love to kind of talk about the Better Together cloud and workspace story, but do hold that thought for, for a little later on. I wanted to hit up a really kind of obviously weird question that I'm sure you get a thousand times. What's Asada? <laughs> Where did that name come from? Uh, you know, uh, the rumor is that <laughs> it is the initials of all of the founders. Now, if I disappear tomorrow, <laughs> <laughs> no you know who to go talk to. <laughs> uh, we do we do get asked that a lot. So the rumor so it's is it's the founders' initials. So it's kind of like you're the ABBA of, of technology, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's pretty cool. For those who don't know, uh, the ABBA is the first initial of the of the four folks in charge of it, or the, the founder of the band. Anyway, apologize if my dog is barking in the background there. You can hear that. Um, the other question I, I wanted to ask is, you work, like you mentioned Colgate, you work with customers of all shapes and sizes. Um, what's the typical journey of a customer? And then to the juicy part, hopefully a segue, where does development fit into that? What's the, what's, what's kind of that look like? Yeah, so right now we're seeing a really interesting shift in where the projects and the life cycle of the projects are at. But a lot of our projects start with customers coming in to do their mail transformation. So they're getting off of Exchange or Office 365 and moving to Gmail. And they'll start opening up Drive, allowing people to use it. Um, we are starting to see a lot more customers now in that ongoing adoption phase, which is really where the workspace development shines as well. So they're trying to recreate workflows for, um, you know, either their sheets or integrations with their office suite. So saying we want to move fully to drive. We want to get rid of these office licenses. How can we maneuver some of these workflows? So sometimes it's just, manual like hey this is just a different process sometimes we have to bring in kevin and his team to say here is the workflow and how to build it around that so. did you do you find it quite difficult sometimes in terms of if you working with a, a customer that perhaps has been using exchange or uh, microsoft office for a long time in terms of uh you know, do, do they come to you already wanting to embrace Google Workspace or do are they more often coming to you saying, we're in, we've heard about Google Workspace and the story starts mm -hmm. there um, or something different, entirely different? So it depends on who you're talking to. So mm -hmm. one of the large things our sales engineering team walks through and gets trained on is objection handling. So with moving off of an office product, whether it's you know, the Microsoft suite or, you know, even mail and teams, it's all about translating it over to the equivalent on the workspace side. So our adoption and change management team does have that job aid that says, if you want Gmail to look like how Outlook looked, here's how you can set that up. Because it, as a reality, like some people really just want their side by side panel and they want to know where everything is. So that's just a small example there. Um, and so some of that does come with, you know, building out additional workflows to say, you have, you have a macro for this already on the, mm. the Excel side. So let's figure out how to translate that into um, an app script over here and workflows. So. The irony is um, I recently moved from a Google workspace to an office organization and I, Im I immediately tried to make my outlook like look like gmail yep <laughs> we, we have some former saudians that have pinged me whenever office 365 goes down or teams goes down and they're like i miss this <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome so the question i have for you so kelly so that you, you come you kind of you know evaluate their use cases their workflows um, you know, one of the things I know that, that Google Workspace is great at is is allowing folks natively to accomplish new ways of working without mm -hmm. customizing anything. But, but then you come across an existing process, existing solutions built. Maybe it's been macros. Maybe it's a who knows an old VB app or whatever. What's the process of kind of unwrapping that and figuring out, A, do we have to custom build this? B, 
how do we work with the customer to get that done? Because some folks are hesitant or, or leery of it or don't have the expertise. And you know, sure, they can call Kevin, but at some point, Kevin leaves the project. Uh, how, how does that conversation and that process go when you're like, hey, we're going to build something here. Here's what we're going to build. Mm -hmm. So, Kevin, I might let you talk more to the ins and outs of it, but we do partner really closely with our change management team. So we will work on ongoing adoption projects. And uh, part of that is generally kind of trying to pull that information out of customers. So these are customer or end users that now have been moved. And they say, hey, you know, what are some of the workflows that you see that you want help recreating inside of Gmail? And so I, over the years, we've started adding in more developer friendly engineers to transformation labs to say, hey, this transformation lab could turn into an app script uh, discussion. And sometimes we actually use that as an opportunity to train on app script. Sometimes it turns into full on uh, prototyping a workflow. And that's kind of where those walk out of. I think, Kevin, you, you've seen a few more recently in terms of the transformation labs. Yeah. Um, and the transformation labs have been have been great, like Kelly said. Um, we have the opportunity to put a developer in there and really see um, you know, as opposed to just taking, you know, use like the VB script example, which is you know, so common, um, you can look at it and just rewrite it. I mean, you know, any sort of developer can do that, but really looking at it and finding out what, what are they accomplishing? You know, what, where's the overlap or where's the change from office to Google and just kind of, I mean, everything doesn't need to be reinvented necessarily, but just looking for the opportunity to streamline it and just maybe use a better service for it. Maybe they were offloading something to a local file system and they say we need to do this and it's hey you're on drive now you know you have shared drives you have this that and kind of go through that discovery process and see you know make sure we're rebuilding it the right way and on the right solution and is that app script or app sheet or you know an isv solution um you know we can really take them all how how open or willing uh, and again, I don't know if it's a sliding scale or obviously the answer could be it depends, but how open and willing are folks doing custom custom development these days? Is it as much as they were? Is it less? Do you meet with objections or something like, whoa, 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 we don't have the time to support this code? Like what's the, where's the industry right now with that? I will say, I think, especially in this part of custom dev, it is a little bit harder because it's shown as a citizen development item. Yeah. So we actually thrive more on the transformation labs, building in smaller aspects into the deployment process, and then also just training the customer admin. So um, I remember I had one uh, admin at a project. I was sitting there, I walked past him and he was doing something with app script all on his own. I was like, what are you, what are you doing? And he was like, Oh, I'm building my service now integration so that <laughs> all of my users have the button on the, the side panel. I was like, Oh, great. Awesome. Um, but it's definitely, I think from an app script side, because it's citizen developer centric, it is a little bit more difficult until you start getting into the larger uh, projects that have workspace centered around it so whether the large integrated sheets those types of things i think it's a, it's a great topic i see on one side you have you know admins and people that are trying to do this rollout and they're like you know less coded projects will, would be good on the other hand you see folks like i'd really like to have the same solutions i had before i'd like to mm -hmm. have that uh, and so you, you brought up the citizen sorry the citizen developer um name we see that a lot like folks discover these things, they find these things, they fumble over things and they go, I got it so far and I can't get any further. And then sometimes the IT folk are like, whoa, but we can't support this any further either, which hopefully sometimes is a, is a phone call to you guys saying, hey, how do we build this? But you know, Kevin, this is probably for you. How do you, A, build that confidence and B, how do you help put that solution in place but then help the customer make sure they can support it going further? And who does support that? Is that the citizen developer? Like, where does it fall in? Where does, where does one of these projects end up, I guess, is the, is the question I'm asking. Yeah, so it can go two ways. Well, sometimes it, it turns into a very large uh, implementation or project, and then we can look at, you know, support model from SADA. Um, and then sometimes it's, 
just, I don't know, an admin assistant or some, you know, anyone who just knows what they want to see, but they, they don't have it available yet. So they say, I have this great tool. They go in, and like you said, they get so far, they come to us and um, we're able to, to kind of polish it, finish it off. And then from there, um, a lot of times I've seen with citizen developers, they like owning that, that kind of tool or you right. know, kind of, so it's a pride as well of, you know, I created this, if it's useful for yourself and then someone else on the team starts using it, um, you know, it really catches on. Um, I think a lot of people kind of embrace that. Um, and then from a, from a support standpoint, um, it, it can be hard sometimes. I mean, trying to find internal capacity to support projects for sure. Like if you're talking about citizen development, you know, within SADA, um, but we, at, at least on our team, try to make ourselves available when we can to, to kind of talk through those things, um, whether it's just at a, at a thought level, you know, how to think through like the basic architecture or what drop down to click or what thing to select in, in app sheet, you know, and, um, I guess I will say we're, we're kind of really lucky at Sada. We have some people, obviously the really gifted people on our team, given the industry we're in in general, but just, um, just real great people. And we have some really good, who I would even say citizen developers on, on our team. Um, the, the guy who runs our, our SE team, for example, is, is always building like app sheet. I don't know, crazy stuff all the time, you know, has no development experience, you know, sorry, Chris, but, <laughs> um, you know, no dev experience, but, apps. <laughs> but builds the coolest things, you mm -hmm. know, and he doesn't need support from me anymore, you know, maybe the first few, um, but he's just really embraced it. And so things like that, you know, it's really cool to see um, kind of that grow. Do you, yeah. do you see a snowball effect? Because when I think of VB script, I, I wouldn't touch it. Um, <laughs> um, just because of the, it feels like the entry level is higher, whereas with something mm -hmm. like app script, I just open the browser and I, or I can just start recording a macro and, and tweak it. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, even things like to get a little technical, right? So the new Google released the new IDE. I, I don't remember what it was, maybe a couple months ago when we started going to like V8, full V8 engine, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and you have the autocomplete in there, which is, I mean, before you could use like Clasp, you know, local package manager, download like a Visual Studio extension that someone built and hope that it has all the stuff in there. But now, you have that. So you know, like, okay, everything I do with Drive is going to start with Drive app mm -hmm. or Drive service, you know, something like that. And then I can see the options from there. Um, and it really makes it easy for people to just pick up on that and, and to really, you know, just go somewhere with it. And, and yeah, they get stuck every now and then, but it's sort of teach someone how to admit, write an if statement and they can write 20 of them, you know, <laughs> once they know how to do one. Um, so it's so, great. So first of all, good plug for, uh, Keith and his team that that, that released those. Uh, that was one of the design goals was to make it simpler. And so that's that's awesome. Let me ask you that because you, you mentioned you have talented folks. You mentioned you have a bunch of folks that have this these skills and capabilities. Um, you know, I, obviously workspace developers aren't born, they're made. How do you, first of all, what do you find folks to do this? Or if, if finding folks is not the right way, how do you make folks? Like what skill sets do you look for? What's the, and, and how do you get them there? What, like what are some of the, the, the trappings that you guys use to make these folks, you know, kind of top class. Sure. And, and definitely development experience, first of all, of course, um, at least to maybe not app script, because that can be hard, but something like JavaScript, you know, mm -hmm. very similar languages, um, even Python, or really just, you know, exposure to a programming language and, and the desire to, to learn more. Um, people who can really, at least in our practice, who can kind of uh, step out of their comfort zone and try things and fail, um, you know, and that's just part of development, you know, just things don't go right the first time, yep. most of the time, <laughs> really, um, you know, being able to do that kind of, kind of self-learn. Um, and I think a, an understanding of workspace is extremely important. Um, like Kelly, correct me if, if different feelings, but just being able to know like what it's like living in the workspace mm -hmm. solution or ecosystem. And then when someone comes to you and says, I have X problem you you live in that ecosystem as well you know the pain points you know you know how to approach that so i'd say exposure to workspace um a little dev experience and then yeah just attention to detail things like that so and i'm oh, sorry okay, okay. I was just going to say, you also find hidden gems. So Kevin and two of our other engineers came on all at the same time. And I think all three of you had 
some form of PowerShell experience. And I was like, this is great for a deployment engineer. <laughs> and all three of them will always pop in sometimes and be like, I wrote this app script over here. Uh, I think uh, Cody was the one that wrote a script to basically take our group's intake okay. and reformat it so that we can plug it into GAM and uh, provision all of the customers' groups. And he was like, this just made my life easier. And we're like, great, awesome. Um, so you find hidden gems, especially as you're looking for deployment engineers as well. So absolutely. So, I, 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 you, I'm sorry, Martin. Well, yeah, I was just going to comment. I, I see that quite often when we talk to Google Workspace developers, it's, it, it is that fundamental knowledge of the product because quite often mm -hmm. when they're looking at doing stuff through the API, if they know it exists in the, the physical interface, they can work that backwards and um, mm -hmm. start going through the documentation and working out how to do it. And also I think coming back to translating if you actually do need to custom dev mm -hmm. it or not, or if somebody came to you with a problem and you said, oh, you can right. actually just do that if you enable this button over here, um, because there's so much of the development work already built into the platform. So obviously you are a large Google centric partner. You obviously have a lot of momentum around cloud as well too. I understand you have an offering that you use to help customers on board and obviously probably use internally too. Uh, Saudi University. Uh, first of all, is there a workspace element of Saudi U? And if not, when do we expect that? Um, but you know, can one of you tell us more about how you're enabling customers to learn more and, and what it looks like. What's the, what's, the, what's the program? Yeah, so I can touch on the SADU side and I'll let Kevin talk about enabling our customers. So um, from the SADU side, that's actually an onboarding program for internal employees. So we're helping, uh, we're interviewing and bringing on, I believe it's four to six uh, college grads training them up on various cloud google cloud technology stacks and they go through a rigorous like 12 week pro i think it's eight to 12 weeks depending on the program they um and they always come out with a project now i can already hear tony's ears because <laughs> he asked me about the workspace uh sada you a couple a couple quarters ago and uh you know starting to really work on the idea of maybe maybe not workspace specifically but workspace dev and what would that look like um it's a little bit of an easier less barrier to entry in terms of like bringing on uh you know new new to the workforce uh employees so well, I think it's, I mean, first of all, I think it's, 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 it'd be great to have assets like that. You know, a couple of things, you know, first of all, workspace development, people go, citizen developer, that must be easy. You can learn that in what, a weekend? And it's not the case. There, there's a lot that goes into it, right? First, learn the product. Second, you better have programming background. Third, you have to understand the idiosyncrasies. We're also seeing a lot of large customers coming to us and saying, we've been on workspace for a year or two years. We were leery at first of citizen developer. We didn't want that. But now we have this backlog of solutions or we kind of trust it better now. We want people to learn. And so we're getting asks now for training, right? They want us to embed with them. We're like, well, we don't have the resources to do that easier. Kevin, how do you actually transition? I used to be a consultant. One of the hardest is to transition off a project so they stop calling you. How do you <laughs> that, that knowledge switch so they can fly by themselves and you can, you can disembark? Sure. So obviously training is, is extremely important at the end of the project, but I think during the project, we also uh, make sure to involve the customer in, in what's going on um, and, and kind of also why we're doing it. I feel like that helps uh, them understand, you know, maybe they don't know, of course, the code that we're writing exactly, but uh, they know the elements that are involved, um, you know, why we've, again, why we've made the design decisions to a certain point. Um, and then kind of, you know, constantly educating them on, on what's going on. And then when we get to the end of it, um, we're really all have a, a complete understanding of, of the solution. Um, and then of course, documentation, things like that throughout the project, we're constantly building out, um, documentation aiming towards, you know, some sort of like definition of done or, or finishing, a <laughs> right. Um, a requirement stock, things like that. Um, so yeah. And then 
also being open to to answer questions throughout the project. I know as developers sometimes, at least me personally, I don't always want to answer those uh, some questions. You know, I just want to build the the solution and have fun. But I think kind of just putting yourself in, in their shoes and being willing to take the extra couple minutes, you know, on the phone calls or answering that email that is maybe so basic, but it just gets them involved and, and kind of gets their buy in and and whatnot on it. Well, it's funny. I think you know consultants. Most consultants realize that the the mark of success is when the customers stop calling you, <laughs> right? When they are satisfied, proficient, and, and and on their own. Uh, you just hope they they call and they have new ideas. And I want to ask that. I, I obviously you mentioned you know you've got these great training resources. You're you're, you're hiring. You've got a you know a bunch of folks. You're growing fast. Uh, you're over 500 people now. You're global. You are not just in you know big cities in the U.S. like San Fran and New York and Chicago, and obviously headquartered in in Hollywood, L.A. Uh, you're in Toronto. You're in Armenia. You're global. Are you guys hiring? What are you looking for? What can somebody do if they're curious? Hey, how can I join the Thought of Team? Ooh, exciting! So uh, I know. Selfishly, I'm going to start with workspace. From the workspace side, I don't know who's watching, but we've, we, I think we're hiring on every single position across our workspace practice. So, uh, right now it is deployment engineers. Kevin has changed teams, so I will be looking to fill him back in uh, at some point. And then uh, we've got sales engineers open. So, if you're more so want to do the sales side rather than the delivery side. We have change management and adoption roles. If you're looking for that, we do have some very uh, good change managers that also dive into the app script side and the developer side, uh, talking about those transformation labs. And then we're also hiring project managers. Um, and then across the entirety, I, I know the Armenia team uh, is hiring a ton of people as well, very focused on Google Cloud. And then uh, our Google Cloud team in general is just always hiring. There's there's an army. I think the InfraMod team is now 100 people strong just for that pillar. Wow. So awesome. um, I'm, I'm sure they would love some more people. No, and if, and if folks aren't really familiar with Sada, like I know you, you annually win partner awards from Google and you've, you know, you've always been growing and you've, you've been there at so many key customers. And so that's why, you know, it's, you know, obviously an amazing organization. A question for you, flip it around for a second. If I was a, a customer and I was curious, how do I, you know, how do I pick Kevin's brain? How do I sign up your team for services or uh, to, to learn things? What's the best way to approach you? Um, so I think Martin has a link, so I'm going to cue Martin on the link there. So um, that might actually, and Veronica, I might have messed up that link for you. I'm sorry. There is a contact us link that uh, Martin will oh, okay. send out there. Um, so they'll get you uh, connected with uh, someone on, uh, it will be more so the sales side as well. They'll make sure to get you right into the right direction. So if you are looking for workspace or development work, um, they'll get you right over to us. Awesome, well, that makes good sense. So what I'd love to do with, with a little bit of time here is, is kind of peel back the covers a little on what do you build? What does it look like? What are typical projects? Now, I know every single custom project is a different project and that's the beauty of it. Um, but, you know, Kevin, I know you've done some really big projects for some large customers that have had some pretty phenomenal impact. And I'm not sure what you can share publicly because obviously there's confidentiality and privacy, respectful to that. But give us, give us an idea of what are some of the use cases? What are some of the problems you solve? What are some, what's the scope of some of these projects? Yeah, so we, one of the really fun things about Sada is we'll take on really anything that's that's workspace related that has development, we'll, we'll knock it out, uh, really no problem. Um, but we, we get the opportunity to work on, you know, small scripts. And like you said, we've also really big projects. So, um, I guess just talking about the, the product specifically, not necessarily the, the customer, sure. but, um, we built a, uh, for example, a time and attendance, uh, and payroll system for hmm. a customer. That was a, a huge, uh, I don't know if you remember how long it was, Kelly, but say 12 month <laughs> year long project, uh, maybe it felt like three, but, uh, took about, <laughs> took about a year. Um, but they wanted, uh, their, 
their employees to be able to use Google Sheets to enter their, their time. Um, and then from there, we built a web app interface for uh, payroll to interact with so they could see who submitted their timesheets, um, a manager approval system. I mean, a full on application all built uh, with AppScript um, natively um, and plug it all into just, just Google Workspace. Um, real neat. So if you're, if you're at this company and you get paid hourly, I mean, you, you use AppScript every day to, to get paid, you know, um, and we've built some other, I mean, I say huge, but really big applications, uh, recently finished a, uh, a financial reporting tool, um, that did have big query in it as well. So a little GCP, uh, in the mix, but, we do like to kind of follow a similar framework sometimes of building applications. So we'll start with building an API um, uh, so we can consume it, whether it's through Sheets, through Drive, whatever, um, generally a web app um, interface. So, you know, the buttons, configurations, things like that. Um, and then if there's another component involved, so like the Sheets aspect or Drive or uh, Gmail or whatever, um, you know, in that way we have the API, we can just consume it from any Google service, you know, and, and just kind of have a full, a full system. Um, and we've done some other things too. I don't know if we want to go outside of just app script. I kind of, kind of think. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I think one of the interesting things that the folks don't realize, like I said, in your full service, right. You, you, you do our entire stack, mm -hmm. you know, not every project has a start and end in workspace, right. It can be a component. It can be a UI. It can be a staging thing. It can be a prototype tool. I mean, there, mm -hmm. there's a, it's a Swiss army knife and, and, and sometimes the blade is too small, right? It's not the right tool to use. Um, and, and so I'd love to, I'd love to hear that before you say, say that. I'd also like to hear, and, I, and this may sound like a funny question, but when is a project too small to engage Sato? Mm -hmm. like what, what, what would you not consider worthy? Because let's be honest. I mean, you know, to put engineering time and resources and support, you're like, you know, it doesn't make sense for us to, you know, to write something small. Is there a sweet spot type of applications? I'm impressed you did a payroll system, but I'm sure if someone's like, hey, we want a button that formats this sheet. You're going to be like, really? Are you really asking us that? <laughs> so what's the, where's the sweet spot for that pro for projects? I don't know if you want to take that from an official standpoint, Kelly. I was thinking about some of the small uh, support ones that we've done. Um, but I think generally most of them are around, I would say about 10,000 or above. Um, okay. But we do also, you know, if we want to look into with customers, we're always flexible. If you, sure, absolutely. Uh, yeah. if someone were to come to us and say, hey, I want to build a button here, we're more going to dive into the why are you unable to create that button? And can we offer you a couple of app script trainings instead? And that will enable you. Um, so we do really, I know Kevin, you, you guys touched on it earlier where we really live and breathe being able to enable our customers on it because we want to make sure that, you know, from a feeling of being able to rely on yourself, that's a, that's a nice feeling as an admin as well. Um, and, not having to call Kevin and Kevin's moved on to three other projects. So um, that's kind of where, you know, we're going to dive a little deeper into that ask. So something small like that, it might be, Hey, you're getting, maybe this admin is getting that question from five different departments to build all this stuff. Let's put together just a training plan rather than building that out. Well, I, I also imagine, first of all, you are full service, right? You're not mm -hmm. you know, development something you do, but you're, you're, you're way more than that, right? You're everything from the migration to the, you know, the, um, you know, the transformation to, you know, user uh, capabilities and stuff. So sometimes development's kind of probably sprinkled in where necessary. Um, then, like I said, you're also building payroll systems as well, too, which, which is, you know, again, you know, you know, super neat that you have that capability, that opportunity. So that's why I was just curious because a lot of folks, I talk to, and sometimes they're smaller, medium businesses. They don't know, can we be a part of this? Is it, is it actually feasible mm -hmm. for us to do this, to, to, to find outside help and to get oh. it done? Because, you know, like I said, with workspace development, sure, you can learn it, but it's way better to turn to somebody like, you know, Kevin and his team where you go, well, they've been doing this for years. They actually can do it in a weekend where it would, you know, take me multiple months to get it done. So it, mm -hmm. it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. A question for you, Kevin. So with Google Workspace uh, on the development side, we do see you know the product 
continues to evolve in terms of services. So, you know, we've, we've had uh, Anu on talking about document AI, we had Christian Schock talking about forms, uh, API, and kind of related to, you know, at the start of the show, Charles was kind of highlighting some of the places where we can get updates and information. For you, is, are there places you go to to find out about this stuff? Or is SADA in a position where Google is basically contacting you and saying, nudge, nudge, there's a form API coming along. Do you want to have a little test beforehand? Uh, a little bit of both, <laughs> <laughs> I guess, if I, if I can say. Um, we do like to you know, try to lead the industry. Um, you know, get our hands on things early. So we, we have a really solid relationship there on, on some items. Um, I'm blanking on the blog. I know I have it in my bookmark somewhere. Probably should look ahead of time, but there's uh, development updates I know, or someone's doing development updates on the Google side mm -hmm. um, that uh, has been really helpful. And then uh, aside from that, which isn't the best way, but I'm constantly in the docs. And mm -hmm. I think Google does a great job of announcing ahead of time when something's going to be deprecated or change. I mean, gosh, I feel like we get a year sometimes to, to redo the code and everything, you know, and if, you haven't looked at the Sheets API docs in a year, then you're probably not developing much yeah. actively, you know, so kind of get it through osmosis sometimes. But um, yeah, I would say a mix of, of all the above. Okay. And Kevin, you were starting to talk about expanding the scope. Like I said, I know your role is broader than just workspace now. Mm -hmm. um, where do you see workspace dabbling in currently, but also in your future world? Like when, where do you see it touching the edges of, of other technologies and what are some of those technologies? Gosh, yeah. So... Honestly, you can you can touch workspace from almost any like GCP or, or, or you know other infra cloud entry point. Um, I give a, an example. So something in, in my new role that I've been working on the past week is actually building a chatbot for someone, but more so a chat platform or system. Um, which I'll just plug this in case any chat devs at Google watches. But uh, the ability to create a chat room through the API and manipulate. User membership would be so amazing. I would love if that would be added. Uh, just throw that out there. It's on the roadmap. I love it. I love it. Maybe I should read the roadmap. I don't know if I've seen it, but no, I, I, I don't even know if it's publicly on the roadmap. Hey, but <laughs> it, it that that's going to open up open up so much opportunity for the API. But uh, anyways, they wanted. Hey, we have uh, these internal employees. They want support. We have like ten support people. How can we make this work? So long story short, building an interface where the user can direct message the bot. Uh, it goes through dialogue flow. So we're hitting GCP. Um, we get that context awareness so they can say, hey, I need a human. Um, that would then get connected basically to or directly to a space. Um, and then we, we sort of built a middleware so they can use things like slash commands. Um, in a DM, you can directly talk to the bot, but they can talk and then goes through to this queue of support agents um, who can either be busy, idle. But yeah, but integrating it right in chat and it just came from uh, they're a GCP customer and, and using actually dialogue flow and, you know, pitch the idea, you know, and now everyone's getting their support via workspace, right? Through, through chat. Let, let me, let me ask this question selfishly. So folks in my world listening in may get some interest. You know, there's a lot of talk about, you know, where workspace is as business productivity tool and kind of has this, you know, little niche over here, but, you know, for, for, you know, driving and pushing workloads for GCP that, you know, that's over here and separate. How often do you see workload actually in opportunities and consumption actually driven from the workspace side? Like you said, someone wants to have a chat UI to do something or someone wants to store data somewhere because it's in the workspace. Do you see workspace drive opportunities back into GCP? Um, yeah, I would say I'm not directly involved in the sales cycle there, sure. but from like a technical and dev standpoint, yeah. Um, data warehousing comes into play a lot you know hey we have this in a big sheet or excel at the time you know um or whatever you know we can look you have you have big query you have cloud store you know whatever spanner application insert name mm -hmm. you know um and of course the opportunity to to move them to that platform and then grow with it you can do so much more with big query than you can with a sheet you know right. depending on your use case but um i don't know if there's anything you wanted to add to that kelly I was just gonna say, especially with connected sheets and building in uh, BigQuery there, um, we're seeing a lot of drive around that. Um, and I mean, we do generally see, I think we've started pulling 
the numbers as well, just in terms of customers, whether they have GCP or workspace or both through SADA, but looking at the numbers of like, do they have workspace? And it's a fair number of like probably a majority of customers that have both workspace and GCP and they, they work so seamlessly together and, you know, even everything from, you know, being able to build in your policies for uh, I am and uh, your I'm I'm butchering this, but your uh, one of the questions we've gotten recently is about your app script folder. So each person mm-hmm. that relates to GCP and all of those policies there. So where that folder structure lies, who can actually create app scripts? Um, so it melds really closely together. Yeah. Uh, another question I have, and Kevin, maybe back to you. You mentioned chatbot. By the way, I'd love to see that. I think it's a super cool idea. Um, what are some of the other kind of preferred ways you deploy, like the project types? I mean, I'm sure some are just you know code behind a worksheet, but do you, do you do you see add-ons? Do you see you know maybe internally deployed add-ons at some of your customers? Like, what is the most common ways, or, or some of the, the common ways you actually deploy solutions on Workspace? Sure. I would say add-ons uh, less frequently, at least at SADA. Uh, we built some for internal consumption, but sure. I, I haven't really seen that uh, externally. Uh, we write a lot of container-bound scripts, right. you know, so doc sheets, slides, forms, um, especially, I think you mentioned Martin, the forms API, you know, mm-hmm. um, things like that. Um, so, yeah, really. I have a question for you. You're, 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 you don't just serve other customers, you serve yourselves, right? Obviously, and you build things. Is there a tool or a solution or something internally that somebody built that is like SADA wide internally in use? Yeah, so we have uh, one, we have a, a signature generator that one of our technical account managers uh, put together. Um, at least I'm gonna give him credit for it. I think he did. <laughs> um, and then he, he actually, same person, really, really gifted person, but um, he also put together a chat. Uh, actually, you guys in the beginning, I think pl- plugged in the beginning of the show, but a chat bot. Um, there's a really great article, um, I think you helped with Charles, that uh, goes over an update. And we have our own version of SADA that has been amazing. Um, yeah. you know, the whole team can get those instant updates when they're posted mm-hmm. from Google. And then, since it's in a space, we can comment on it. So if it's, yeah. hey, this is a great update, or hey, this falls yeah. short of what we expected, whatever. But yeah, Mike, I think- Mike wants his shout out about his highlight duplicates add-on. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that, that's what I love. I mean, you know, you know, obviously Google is a team of engineers internally. You guys have lots of engineers. And so these things pop up because people are comfortable, familiar. And like I said, there aren't always the tools available or the budgets to do it. So you, you, you write it yourself. And we had Eric Kalita on a show a couple of weeks ago. And, you know, Eric was famous for creating all these scripts that would, pardon the term, go viral because people are like, oh, we're going to use that. We're going to use that. We're going to use that. And, um, just because you know it, it's easy and it flows. That's why I do love it. It is accessible. It can grow into a bigger solution. You can report it to a different platform if necessary. But you know, workspace, you build something quickly. It's up and running. There's less obstacles. You know, I was thinking to myself a second ago when you were talking about the payroll solution. You know, one of the things that's really kind of unique about workspace development, it doesn't require a credit card. It doesn't require <laughs> you to worry about you know throttling costs. It it it, it runs for ring on the back end it's so kind of like there are some virtues of it to actually use it for things that make sense especially prototyping especially small businesses and so that's why i always like tell people this is you know it's a best kept secret um you know share it loudly something we've talked occasionally about on the show is um google sheets and the occasional butchering of google sheets to perhaps turn it into a database when it shouldn't really be a database is that something you encounter um, quite often do you do you have any nightmare sheet stories <laughs> we uh, yes we do run into that frequently um especially a lot of times people ingesting data that was uh, in excel you know and uh trying to get over yeah um i think i don't know if i've been around long enough but there's some archaic or some old thought that spreadsheets make good databases uh mm. kelly you want to comment on that oh, i was gonna say that's a- probably actually the use case for why you wrote our uh, migration reporting connector. So we would, the first iteration of it was, 
hey, like we need to have all of the migration statistics for this mail migration of our go live weekend, you know, ready to go in a spreadsheet. The customers always ask for it. So the first iteration of it was we're pulling it directly into the spreadsheet. But uh, Kevin, as the data studio connector came out, started just plugging it directly as part of a data studio connector filterable list. No more giant spreadsheets. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was able to automate everything. It was nice. You, been, you both mentioned in passing a couple of times AppSheet. AppSheet mm -hmm. is geared towards the system developer. It is primarily a no code solution, although there is a ways now to hook into AppScript. Where is that sitting in the business? Are customers asking for it? Are you using it for applications? What's the what, what's the story behind your AppSheet exposure? I mean, like, <laughs> yeah. Um, so we we actually had a really big uh, app sheet from a from a customer standpoint project. Um, that I know outside of the citizen developer, but I mean, if you're a customer of this company, you're using app sheet. You're you're being exposed to it just as just as a customer. We built a, a handful of applications, um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's there's a lot of internal tools, or I say a handful of internal tools. Like I know Chris has built some internally here, um, some other team member as well. Um, so yeah, I, I would say just from a traction standpoint, yeah, we definitely see it picking up traction. Um, yeah. Being something that people want. It's you know, one of my, one of my curiosities around is, you know, is there a kind of an aftermarket consulting business for it? Will people actually, you know, do they see it as a tool that sure I could figure this out, but what if I could just turn to somebody like Sod and have a solution, you know, sent back to me that was perfect and I didn't have to think about it. So I was just curious if, the, mm -hmm. if there was any uptake there. Um, yeah. And that's, even, yeah. I was just gonna say it's definitely something we have done, you know, and do even even on a small scale. If it's hey, we we started this, you know, we can't finish it. We could do that, or um, you know, from ground up. Yeah, both. Hey, one of the things that's uh, I, I mentioned at the top of the show that really great podcast called you know, the Google Workspace Recap Podcast. I know you're a great organization for sharing community information. You come, you're at all of our big events. You're known for tremendous parties, by the way. Um, <laughs> you're, you know, you're thought leaders in so many ways. You've got, you know, many folks that are so well respected in it. You also have a show. Um, I believe it's called Twenty Seven Degrees. I'd love to know where that name comes from as well, too. Um, but that's a way to stay touch of what uh, folks at Sada are doing or how Sada seems. Uh, the world and is there anything you can add to that or you want to do a shout out to the that program and let folks know what they could expect by checking that out can i say big fan of ryan sorry <laughs> <laughs> sorry, troy. You... sorry troy Aww, <laughs> Troy's awesome too um yeah so uh i believe it's every fortnight and martin keep me honest here that's every two weeks <laughs> <laughs> uh, and um they're doing just as much like talking through the workspace updates but also as we move towards this ongoing adoption and ongoing transformation uh they're also bringing in customers so you're getting live customer stories like i think one of the stories on there was with we work and how they moved and changed all of their um off of Zoom to Meet and how they worked through the Meet hardware side of that. Um, so really talking about a lot of the ongoing adoption, a lot of the new and upcoming updates. And, uh, you know, shout out to Rowan's LinkedIn posts. I also use those to reference uh, sometimes if I'm like, hey, I need a quick recap and the, the weekly recap for the updates hasn't come out yet. Uh, I go to Ron's LinkedIn. I love the recap of Next that they did and the, the, the yeah. blog post where it was like one line for each feature release or whatever. That was awesome. Yeah. So like I said, I you know, super appreciate it. I mean, there's tons I, of places to find information, but it's great. I, I just also, the, um, there was a great episode on uh, public sector stuff. So I think mm -hmm. it's probably worth mentioning that, you know, Sado, it's, it, it's not just enterprise. So oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it can be core. EDU. EDU, Gov, PubSec, um, and our PubSec customers, actually, uh, there is a case study out there as well for the virtual assistant scheduling uh, tool that was used, I, I think, by a Department of Transportation um, to schedule DMV appointments and use it virtually so they would set up a meet. So it was pretty cool. That's awesome. Hey, we're pretty close to time. I always mm -hmm. like to ask a question in passing and i know it's somewhat loaded and, and if you watch the show you should definitely expect this question um 
This is the test. This is a little bit. What would you like to see from Google? Like, what's the one thing you'd like or would change or would ask for? Keeping that specifically around workspace, workspace development. Anybody have a something like, wow, I really wish you would do this. I mean, the answer is nothing. That's perfect. But oh no, there's so much. <laughs> I know. Kelly, like I got 38 right now. Let me see. <laughs> I think Kevin gave his with the, the extending the chat API. The chat, yeah, <laughs> and you already got your wish, but you can have one more. I'll take the URL fetch uh, if I could get that limit. Increase. I understand why it would be where it is, but some sort of uh, even like moving to a standard GCP project, if you could like request a, qu a quota increase on that, you could just open up the door to building so much more, uh, mainly thinking data studio, but um, just because you need to pull big data sets. But I, I feel like that would really open things up to allow, allow that. Yeah. I'll, I'll throw one more out there. Um, we are all about collaboration inside of workspace. And I know one of the uh, hardest watch points if we are taking on larger dev projects has been being able to have two developers work on the same script at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, Charles, I think that's the second time that's come up. In that's two more weeks. than the second. And you're just <laughs> bringing it back on a few more times. I'll just repeat that as well. No, you're, you're, you're absolutely right. I know that's one of, one of the things the team is trying to figure out is how to do better team dev. And, you know, Kevin, I, you know, I, like I said, I know we're kind of at time, but I, I love to hear how do you do those larger scale projects without, you know, obviously going crazy because we know workspace is not, you know, perfect for, you know, source control and, and, and the team environment. And, uh, you know, a lot of, yeah, Kim just chimed in that she agrees with you, Kelly. And so in, in, in the comments, so, yeah, the three there's... of us had some fun weekends yeah. as we were all yeah. like, did everyone just close out, just close the, close the screens. Yeah. Do you, that said, do you, uh, do a lot of folks use things like Clasp to try to get away from the, that? You, Kevin, I know you mentioned the new editor's great, but, um, you know, sometimes you want, you want your own environment or to manage the code differently. Yeah. Um, talking to people. Yes. I see it a lot. I will be completely honest with you. I use the IDE now more than class personally. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just like, I'm a big fan of it personally. I don't know. It works great for me. Uh, it's gray. If I haven't used it, it's not, if I've, you know, variables and stuff, just it works, it works wonderful. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's definitely an improvement. I've yeah. heard a lot of people, they're, they're less relying on class. Um, obviously things they want are, you know, better deployment features in the new ver version. They want better library functionality. They want better collaborative features. And some of those projects are underway, but you know, as you know, AppScript is, is a small but steady team. And so we don't, we don't get things rapidly. And you know, this was a big year getting V8 and the IDE yeah. <laughs> in, in the same year, like, Ooh. but, uh, you know, we, we hope to see more with it. I mean, the great thing is it's growing, it's exciting. Um, you know, it, it's great when you have a problem that too many people want to develop at the same time on the same project. So it's a good problem. But. Right. And yeah, and to your point, we're always happy to chat with you, uh, come back and chat with you or, or find another medium, whatever, to go through, you know, some more technical deep dives. Um, Absolutely. Look, for, yeah, we'll look forward to that. All, all sorts of, you know, tricks that we have or just to kind of get people thinking, you know, different ways to use AppScript. But yeah, we got a ton of it. We, uh, we build some cool stuff. Awesome. I think we got a follow-up show then. Brilliant. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Well, um, I know we've had some people in the chat as well. Um, also, um, yeah, plus one in the uh, co-lab, so take note, Charles. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But I think we're at time. It's been fascinating uh, hearing about what SADA does and some of the, you know, your individual roles within SADA. Um, thanks for those that have uh, tuned in for this. Uh, the recording will go up straight away and also we'll include lots of links for all the things that we've mentioned as part of the show. Is there anything you think, Kelly, we missed in terms of things? I think we kept we were quite comprehensive in terms of bookmarking and stuff. Yeah, I think you got everything. Sorry for not catching that one link. <laughs> <laughs> no no problem. We got it. We got it. I, I know uh, folks I know folks can find you. You guys are pretty well known in the industry and you're you're a great leading partner. So again thanks for, to, your, th thanks for your time. I'll say shout out to Kim who who commented. She's one of our, our rock star developers here at uh, at Salt on the team. So Mike Mumford watching. watching as well. He was chatting me up aside. 
Mike's great as well. I can't shout out everyone, but Kim, uh, Kim has, <laughs> has got me through on the dev side many times. Is has uh, been my right hand on a lot of cool stuff. So this is this is starting to feel like the Oscars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Play the music. Thank you. Thank you. Well, folks, that is us. Um, we will uh, no doubt see you all next week, same time. Well, it won't be the same time. I think we finally converge on the same. Time we do again. converge. I think we're still putting up a, a, a show for next week. I don't think we've got that done yet. I know in two weeks we've got chat bots with one of our chat bot PMs. But next week I think we're trying to find a topic that fits in neatly in between. So stay tuned for that. We will be back in our regular place. Awesome. In the meantime, folks, happy scripting. Thanks. For